here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Once again, I just want to express our hearts by saying something you've probably heard many, many times in the last few days. Happy New Year. Amen. Yes, Happy New Year, Jack. And one thing at the top of my list, of course, is that we've had the Lord walk with us through this past year, and we're looking to him again this year because Jack had um, bad health for a while, but now he's doing better than ever, and God has brought him back even into the studio. And now... Jack, something we're very, very happy about, and that is the fact that you have a new vision about going around the world. Oh, Rexella, they said I'd never preach again. Let me remind you folks who are listening to us for the first time, because this is our first program to all the world. All the world. There are 7 billion, 600 million, and for the first time we can reach them. Why? Fulfilling Mark sixteen fifteen, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. And then again, Matthew twenty eight nineteen, go ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And ladies and gentlemen, we've signed contracts with almost every radio station in the world. Why? Because of my age. And I'm going to tell you a thrilling story in a few moments about the Holy Spirit visiting us and what he told me I had to do and that was to reach the whole world and I've got it all settled and we've already had seven million saved in our crusades. I'm asking God for another seven million. They said I'd never preach again because of my age. Soon be 90. I've been in this 72 years, and I'm going to have so much to tell you. Let's go on. You really look good for that age, doesn't oh, you? Oh, hey, hey, y'all look at me, folks. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, you know, we're going to be giving you some headlines on the program, as you well know. And by the way, going into all the different countries of the world, we are going by radio. And uh, we are in almost every country now. We have just a few we have to accomplish yet. But at least that's our goal, to be in every single 247 countries of the world. And then, of course, see, here we are on to YouTube. But I want to draw your attention to a headline. And it has to do with Prince Harry and Meghan, his beautiful fiance. They're going to be getting married May the 19th. And my, oh my, how great that will be to, as uh, they come together and uh, they're going to be having about 800 at their wedding. Yes, Jack? Not as beautiful as you, and we had 700. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. My mom and dad, of course, were very, very active in a big, big church, and so we did have a large wedding. And by the way, he has given her a ring, I think, that's second to none. $350,000, are you kidding? Well, anyway, he loves her with all of his heart. And they are going to have a beautiful, beautiful wedding. Jack, well, you gave I me a nice you ring. I too, but we yes. had the crowd he had. But by the time I fed them, I didn't have money for a ring. And so I, my ring cost a dollar fifty cents <laughs> that I got in a bubblegum pack. <laughs> I do want to deal with something very dear to my heart, besides a wedding. And that is a wonderful song that I used to sing, and you'd probably sing too. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and bless her. Well, you know, the Lord has blessed the United States this past year in a wonderful, wonderful way. Some of the headlines, year in review, and outlook, U.S. stocks wrap up strong in 20. 17. And then here again from the Wall Street Journal, tech stocks surge into the new year. Wonderful. In 2017, markets rose above, yes, yes, markets rose above politics, and that's for sure. Sluggish wages see uptick. Pay is rising at double the national average in the metro areas. Oh, that's great. 
They're, they're rising faster than they ever had. A couple more here. Shares of U.S. banks extend their climb. Climb, climb, going above what they ever expected. And here's another one, the last one. The Dow's milestone year signs of global growth powered gains in the United States and stocks around the world. So God is blessing America. Thank you, Lord. The land that I love, and I just pray that we will give him uh, the glory and uh, continue that direction, Jack. Rexella, I had Hannity on the other night, and he had 50 different people from the media, all the networks except Fox, and the rotten, dirty, filthy things they did against President Trump. It broke my heart. Now, I'm going to tell you something. All of them predicted his failure, but he has done what the last 11 presidents have not been able to do. These are the greatest headlines. Everything is now booming. True. Why? The blessing of God. Now, let me tell you what's really behind it. There's a man by the name of Pence who is his vice president, and he's helping Trump. He might even soon lead him to Christ. Pray, folks. And Pence got up and said, I want everybody to know I'm the vice president with this Trump. There's three things. Number one, I'm a born again Christian. When they talk that, it's real. Most of them never say the words born again. Secondly, I'm an American. Thirdly, I'm Republican. But he said, the important one is, number one, a born-again Christian. And the reason Trump even now says, let's move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, which the Bible teaches is what's going to happen because he's got this man who loves Jesus, who lives in the book, the greatest vice president, I believe, in history. Thank you. Mr. Pence. We're going to deal more with that next week, Jack. Yes, oh yeah. Oh my, about the moving of the embassy, for our embassy, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Oh, let me tell you what just All happened. Right. Yes. The priest said to me, what's wrong with that? Trump, now he wants to move the embassy to Jerusalem. Is he gone nuts? No! He knows the Bible. When Jesus returns, he doesn't come to Tel Aviv, he comes to Jerusalem. 263 times Jerusalem is honored by Jehovah God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessed Holy Spirit. So get your Bible out and start studying it. Study to sow the self-approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Most of you Christians don't know a thing about the Bible. Before you open your mouth, open your Bible. Mm, well... God tells us everything we need to know about life and life after death in the Bible because he spoke to men as they penned the Bible. Oh, my, oh, my. We'll talk about that, too, uh, in the future. But Jack always tells us the truth. And you know why he tells us the truth? Because he quotes the Bible. Jack, by the way, before I get into this article, how many uh, scriptures do you have memorized? Just about how many? 18,000. And when I had this terrible thing and they were working on my heart, three times I was just two hours from death. And I was there in a coma for 60 days and I lost all my comprehension, all the years of work, six hours a day studying God's Word, memorizing 18,000 verses, and I awakened and I didn't know my name. My heart was broken. I went home for six weeks and I knew nothing. And I had a little precious girl. The doctor said, you're alive because of her. Oh. She came back all those days, 60 and your recuperation for a total of 138 days and sat by you for five hours a day. Oh, Chadi, oh. my little sweetheart. She's yeah, the greatest my thing in my you. life. And I'll tell you, if it weren't for her, I would not be the man today I am spiritually. But praise God, the verses are coming back. All the words are, I again know them. Now I get a little confused, and you would too. 18,000 verses, chapter and verse, there's two for everything. I know 36 
thousand members. <laughs> I did. I'm going to get back. I have trouble remembering my telephone number. <laughs> so many of us. Well, are I real... didn't. That's how I got you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Oh my! You see why I put. How grateful I am that he is so much better and getting better every single day. Right at the top of my Thanksgiving uh, list and, and what I'm grateful for and uh, what I'm happy for in the new year. He's here and he's sharing with the world about the things that are happening in the world connected with the Bible. Now, I want to just uh, give you another headline here. And it's quite interesting. The International Center for Journalists. I never heard of this. And it was in the Wall Street Journal, which I found very, very interesting, shaping the future of global journalism. Now, Jack referred just a moment ago to the fact that many of the journalists were not too kind to the president this past year. And, you know, he did some things. Of course, we're all human. We do some things that uh, really may not make sense, but at least it came together and our country's been blessed. And look what they're going to be doing. The International Center for Journalists. With facts competing with falsehoods as never before, the International Center for Journalists empowers reporters worldwide to produce reliable coverage using new technologies and best practices. Join us in supporting the truth tellers. The truth tellers. My, oh, my. You know, that's very, very important. And that's one reason Jack tells the truth, because he quotes what God has to say. And God always gives us the truth about the present and about the future. How wonderful that is, Jack. Thank you for memorizing all oh, that. Oh, and there are two people you can trust on television, Hannity and Judge Jenny. Yes. They have the truth. And the other night, Hannity had 50 different people there. He showed them. And these were all the guys from all the stations. The ones that lie like the paper said. And I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to get away with your lies, you bunch of hypocrites. I, I wanted to cry. All the rotten, dirty, filthy things they said about the President of the United States of America. Now, I've voted for all kinds. I've been a Democrat, a Republican, and a, one that, that just... I am not a politician. I vote for the man. And if you said about me what you said about him on that station, I think I quit. I, I, I'd have a hard time. What he has taken from you, liars! And he calls it fake reporting, and is he ever right? The ninth commandment, if you believe the Bible and some of you say you're Christians, is thou shalt not bear false witness. Lie! And I'm going to tell you, you're going to meet God someday. Revelation 28, but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire which burneth with fire and brimstone. Who said so? God Almighty sitting in the heaven. And you're going to pay for your lying and your sins. One wonderful thing. The top of my list, even above Jack being well and getting better all the time, is the fact that we do have a Savior. Things in the world don't look very good right now. But how wonderful it is to know that the Lord can take away anything we've done. Jack mentioned a whole list of things just a moment ago. But he wants to be the Savior of the world. And he is the Savior of the world. Now this program is going to be going into almost every single country of the world through radio. And we're glad that we can do this. And some of you probably wonder, oh my, I've done this, I've done that. How can I ever go to heaven? when I pass, how wonderful it is to know that Jesus said that if you will confess your sins, he will come into your heart, cleanse you, make you his child, walk with you every day, and when you close your eyes, you'll open them in heaven. That we can praise the Lord for too. 
we have an eternal home in heaven one day. Oh, my, Jack, how wonderful to know that. Oh, this is the that. message yeah. that we have for the world. Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 3. And that was God saying when he raised him from the dead, I accept the work he's done for sinners. And for whom was it? Jack Van Impey. I grew up in a nightclub entertainer's home. I'll tell you about it next week. I was drunk a number of times as just a boy, 12 years of age. I found Christ when I was about 15. And my life was changed. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. My alcoholic father wanted nothing to do with God. He went Roman Catholic and left the church and said, I no longer believe in God. I'm an atheist. He came home drunk night after night as a nightclub entertainer in the Belgian clubs of Detroit. There were 40,000 Belgians here. And I drank from his glass. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes. Oh, my. All have sinned. I'm going to tell you something. Feminists say he's not a sinner. He's a liar. And the truth's not in him. Why? When God says all, he means all. We've all done some things. Oh, we like to judge all these guys now who've patted a girl on the butt. How many of you have done it and got away with it? Now they're going after the guys in the restaurants and next in the schools. Where do they start going through all the preachers in the churches? God help us. What a crummy world. Listen to me. If any man say he is not a sinner, has not sinned, he's a liar. There's not a single man that is good and does perfect. Not one. That's God speaking. What do you do about it? The precious story, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish hell, but have everlasting life, heaven. He that believeth on the son is not condemned. He that believeth not on the son is condemned already. The Bible is so plain. This is the record that God has given to us, eternal life. And this life is through his son, Jesus. And all you have to do is act on John 1, 12. As many as receive Jesus, to them give you power to make sons and daughters of God. And you're totally forgiven. And you can sing, gone, 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 gone. Yes, my sins are gone. What a blessed message. You know, it is so wonderful to know that the Lord cares about our everyday life. Amen. That's why we have the Bible that tells us how to react when somebody hurts us. Do we get back at them? All right, how do we react when uh, things go wrong in our life? Do we give up and just let everything go? The Bible tells us that we have someone who will lift us up. How great to know the Lord as we walk with Him. And Jack, I am amazed that when you came home, the Holy Spirit this past year really came and spoke to you, yeah. like he did in the Bible to his uh, prophets. He spoke to them. Holy men of God wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That's how the Bible was written. Now, he spoke to you. Tell us exactly what he told you he wanted you to do. Well, first of all, I have a great guy working for me, Dr. Ken Vansel. And when I asked him to do something, he does it. I said, how many times did the Holy Spirit of God speak to people in all the Bible? Right. And he checked it out. He said, 379 times. Well, listen, if he talked to others 379 times, don't say this is baloney that he talked to Van Impey uh, for what he's about to say. August 13th, 2027th. And he usually comes at four in the morning. And sometimes I say, uh, uh, sir, not, he's not a sir, he's a spirit. You don't see him, but you hear him. And when I sleep, he's there working my mind. What? And I'll wake and I know what he wants for the day. Now, is that impossible? Holy men of God spake 
as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Moved? He even came on their minds. You don't see him? All three were spirits originally. Only one took flesh, Christ. So he could have blood to die for your sins. But the Father's still a spirit. And the Holy Spirit will always be a spirit. All right. He came to me and said, and I started crying. Mm. The Father God hath sent me to you to tell you that you are to be the first man in the history of the world to tell people that Jesus is about to return. Oh, wow. And I've been working on this thing and putting it all together, facts and everything. And on May the 14th, the birthday of the nation of Israel, 1948, I will announce what I believe the Bible teaches about Christ's return. Tell everyone. I'm going to mention every week. And I will be doing seven messages on the Jew. God's chosen people. Right, you anti-Semites. Would you say, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Who are these holy men? Now get ready for a shock. There are 66 books in this Bible. 64 were written by Jews. What? Only one Gentile had anything to do with the Bible. His name was Luke, and the book was named after him, plus the book of Acts. Don't talk about the Doye version of the Catholics or the King James version of we Americans. Every Bible you have from the beginning until now, 2,000 years old, 3,000 years old, was written by Jews. 64 of the 66 books. Boy, I'll tell you, from May 14th to June 16th, tell every Jewish person you know, I'm getting the programs out in Jerusalem. Even Netanyahu might run them. The world has to know the truth. Why? Because when Christ returns, now get ready for the shock of your life. I'll be proving it. He sets up the Judea Christian new eternal world order. What? Yes. They're all the two groups, people of God, Jews and Christians. The Judea Christian new world. Start telling others. That's why I got on to every station, because the Holy Spirit says, you have to tell them, and it has to be your voice. And I've made things and promises and promotional ideas with all my ten board members. If anything happens to Rexel or me, and it could because I'm under death threats, a lot of people don't like what I'm preaching. They are to carry on. I have enough materials, enough videos, enough books and messages for 75 years. And he's not going to wait that long to come. No. <laughs> Get ready. No. May 14th. Certainly. We'll, all right. We want to be ready. The Lord could come today. The Lord could come tomorrow. Are you ready for that wonderful return of the Lord? I'm going to ask Jack if he would do something right now and have you Pray this prayer with him, saying, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. We all are. We've all done wrong. And I would want to put my faith in the Lord Jesus. I'm accepting him as my Savior. How wonderful. I trust that you will pray with him right now. Will you pray that prayer, Jack? Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a lot of baloney being preached today, even in Christian churches. They've got replacement theology 814 times when it says Jerusalem in the Bible you change it to heaven every time it mentions Israel the 2600 times you call it the church baloney if you're in a church like that get out because they are preaching fables damnable doctrines and doctrines of demons now 
Who is Jesus? The only way to heaven, Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no woman can come to my Father God but by me. You know how often that's in your Bible? 400 times the Holy Spirit wrote all 66 books. And 64 were written by Jews. And still Jesus said, I'm the only way. And remember, he came forth from a Jewish virgin. And that's why the Apostle Paul said, Salvation is of the Jews. Tell the Jews. May 14th to June 16th. It's all about the God who loved them to the world. And you can get mad at me if you're a Gentile. I'm a Belgian. Man, you don't think it bothers me that I'm not a Belgian Jew? <laughs> he loves the Jew. But he also loves his people who receive him as Savior. I pray the prayer right now. Lord Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for that precious efficacious holy blood that flowed from your veins blood without sin and it was shed for me Lord to wipe away my sin for we all have sinned and we need you Jesus right now I open my heart to you Jesus come in save me I pray in your holy and precious name Jesus Amen Amen. Oh, my, oh, my. I'd love to hear from you if uh, you prayed that prayer. And I would be happy uh, to send you a wonderful little booklet for Steps in a New Direction if you would just write to me. Now, I just want to say this wonderful little uh, thought. You know, we've gone through many troubles. Oh, my, oh, my. I have a cold right now. <laughs> you know, we've gone through so many troubles. And uh, we wonder how we're ever going to get through. But isn't it wonderful to know that we're never alone? The Lord walks with us through everything that we will face. How good to know that the hand of God is around us. And I want to leave you with this thought. When trouble overtakes you, let God take over. Whoa, I love that. When trouble overtakes you, let God take over. And don't forget, we're going to be with you every single week by means of radio the next year and also YouTube. So tune in. We'll be there for you. And remember, God cares for you, and so do we. Amen. Yeah.